Hello, this is a video about how to get special ed staff admin privileges in a regular ed Schoology page so that special ed staff can assist in creating modified and accommodated assignments for students with IEPs or 504s or whatever. All right, it's not the most uh, practical process right now, but in this distance learning COVID-19 era, we need something and this does work. All right, so this is my uh, World History One period four class. And um, you can see I have various like discussions and links and assignments and stuff like that. And I even have some like little quizzes that are worth no points. Um, and so what would be cool, of course, is to have IEP staff or special ed staff be able to get in here and create uh, modified versions of the assignments or versions of the assignments with accommodations that would allow um, us to follow the law and help students. All right, so here's the process to make that happen. All right, so if you're the regular ed teacher, you're going to have to collect the access codes here. Here's the, they'll always be in green over here. I'm going to have to change this one after this video is made. You can reset them anytime you want. Um, so you have these access codes, and with the access code, you'll have to send those access codes to the special ed staff helping you out. So they'll have to keep a Word doc or a spreadsheet or something where they have a list of all the access codes for um, the staff that they are going to be assisting. And that's annoying and you shouldn't have to do it, but unfortunately at the end of every 24 hour period, anybody who's been joined to this class who is not either the, the like regular ed teacher of record or the um, actual students of record will be washed out at the end of every 24 hours. I assume that's for security purposes, but uh, it makes this process a lot more complicated, particularly with staff, but it is what it is. So with this access code, every 24 hours or whenever they feel like checking in, I would probably do that on a schedule, the special education staff could pop into this class and see what's there. All right, and the idea would be that they could kind of scan through here and figure out, all right, this is fine, this needs modification, I can find a alternate reading that covers the same basic ideas as this. So the special ed staff would want to figure out like, what can I do with the students that I'm trying to help to make this page work better for those students. All right, and so once they have a little bit of a plan, then they should contact the regular ed teacher, and this is the annoying part, because um, even though they have joined the class, they won't have the ability to change anything unless they are made admin. And so they'll have to have some schedule or way of communicating with the regular ed staff to have the regular ed staff go into the members list here. I'm not going to click on this because it'll pop up student names. And then um, they will have to be made admin. And so what that looks like is when you click members, it'll bring up a list of all the students. Um, and in this case, this person is actually a special ed staff member who I have who has joined the class using the access code, but they're not admin. They're just a regular student, so they can't change anything. That's what happens when you use the access code. So the regular teacher will have to go through and make admin these teachers. So you just use this pull down thing over here and make them admin. You'll have to do that, you know, whenever you want the IEP people to be able to, or special ed uh, staff to be able to change stuff. It's annoying and will take, you know, five minutes a day or five minutes on Tuesdays and Thursdays or whenever you schedule this time or whenever they request it. All right. But that would allow, once they have been made admin, the special ed staff to change um, this page. All right. And so from the special ed staff point of view, what they're going to do once they have admin privileges is figure out something that needs to be adjusted. So uh, what we're going to adjust here is this assignment here, and I'll show you that in a second. And then once they've adjusted it, they're going to put it into this modified and accommodated assignments folder. I would suggest probably this is the way to do it. Um, there are other ways, but um, this is probably the easiest way on both the modified and uh, or the IEP slash special ed and regular staff. So if you have a folder where you're going to put all the stuff for the students who are going to get this, uh, the cool thing about that folder is then you can use this pull down menu over here to individually assign it. Again, I can't click this because it'll bring up student names. But you could uh, individually assign this folder to specific students, and then the rest of the students can't even see that the folder exists. And so you, you know, the students with uh, special ed accommodations or modifications or whatever would know, like, okay, I got to do this stuff in the pink folder, um, and I can ignore the other stuff, or I do always do the discussions, but my written or quiz assignments will be in this folder. All right, so let's show you how to do this. So if I were an IEP teacher and I actually had, you know, the moment where I do have admin privilege to this thing, 
I'm then the teacher here. I could I could really do a lot of damage actually to somebody else's classroom, so be careful about that. But what you're going to want to do, like if you're going to try and change this assignment to make it be more reasonable, like take off time limits or reduce the questions or you know add different kinds of questions, uh, which you know in my class I'd be totally happy if somebody did that to make this a better accommodated or modified assignment. And so um, so what the IEP teacher will do then is take this pull down menu for this thing that they know they need to change. And then they would save that to resources. So save to resources. So I'm going to, as the IEP teacher, modify this assignment, use the pull down menu, save to resources. All right. And I'm just going to drop it straight into my home resources folder and save a copy. All right. So resources, if for those of you guys who don't know, is where you have your, it's the best place to make your stuff. Uh, if you make it straight into the course, uh, it's a pain to find later. So I'm going to go to my resources folder and it's not terribly well organized, but whatever. Um, that's the assignment that I just co copied over. You can see I'm making this video on April 1st and there it is. It always goes to the bottom of the list. So now that I have a copy of the assessment as the IEP teacher, I can go through and do whatever I want with it. Uh, I'm going to edit the questions. So uh, let's see. Right now there are 10 questions here. I'm just going to delete some questions. All right. And because that, you know, I don't think these questions, this quiz is too long. All right. Um, and then I could also uh, modify the question. So like you can see this one has a, a two minute uh, time limit. I could either take that off, although I wouldn't recommend it because sometimes students will leave the whole quiz open for like 40 minutes and it, it glitches out. So you're better off like doubling the time or, you know, whatever it is you feel like need, you need to do. Um, so you could save that question. And so now this is a modified question. Uh, you could also, if you were the IEP teacher, be like, uh, this is a terrible version of this question. I can think of a better one. You could write like, you know, please describe this thing in words or, you know, any other way you felt like doing it. Or you could reduce the number of choices on a multiple choice test so that there's only like, you know, is it this one or is it that one? Make it a tiny bit easier or change the timing or whatever. Anyway, uh, you can change whatever thing you want to change about this test to modify it. Go back to resources. And then uh, from there, you will have this new version. And then you can just add it back to the course. So here's the new version. Click Add to Course. And it will then go into the course that you want it to go in. In this case, it came out of my period four. It was the picture of the dissected corpse in Japanese. And you click that you're going to add it to there. The only thing that's tricky, and this is irritating, but it's a thing, is you have to choose a category and it has to be ungraded. If you don't click that, uh, it won't actually go to the class. So choose the class, change the category to ungraded, click Add. And then um, I'm going to go back to that course. So as the IEP teacher, I have changed the assessment and I have added it back to the course. Courses, and there's the course. And it'll always go to the bottom of the list. So there it is. There's my modified version. Um, I would probably change the name of that just to make life easier. And so I'm going to e edit that. Instead of being circle, which is for my honors uh, level kids, I'm just going to make that mod. Or you can you know, choose whatever name makes sense to you and seems uh, appropriate to you. All right. So there's the modified version of that assignment right there. All right. And then I can just grab that assessment and drag it and drop it. It's always a little tricky to get this to work right. Um, into the folder. Uh, the other thing you can do, because I can never get that to work, I don't know why, is just, uh, let's see, move, and then uh, move to where it goes, and it moves it into there. All right, um, so then that assessment would be in there. And so the student who's receiving accommodation or modification would be able to find their changed assessment by the special ed staff, not particularly necessarily by the uh, mainline teacher and or the regular ed teacher and the regular ed teacher could then you know you could if you're a special ed teacher be like hey can you look at the modification see if this makes sense to you uh, it would depend on the relationship you have with your teacher uh, if you are the special ed teacher All right and then again if you feel like it you can cut you can uh, edit this and uh, let's see how do I assign this to us oh uh, there is individually assigned even here. So I could have like a modified folder for like five students, but I'm having a different version of this thing for each individual student. Like I might make two different modifications if I had to, if I had a lot of uh, 
mainstream special ed students. So you could individually assign it there. And again, I can't click on that because it'll bring up student names. Individually assign there. The way you got to that again, click on this pull down menu, edit, and then the individually assign button, which is totally not obvious, but it does exist. All right. And so that would be how you would do it. Uh, you can create this folder for the students who are going to need modifications and accommodations. And the IEP teacher, if they have been given admin privilege, can get in there and add and change assignments at will by uh, making a copy of the original assignment to their resources page and then modifying in the resources page and then adding it back to the class. All right, sorry that's a super long video, but this is a fairly complicated process. All right, but that would allow that cooperation to happen in. Uh, in an easy way where both parties have the ability to work equally and asynchronously. I hope that was helpful. Thanks. Bye.